Hi, right, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. What I thought we'd do in today's video is talk a bit about weather work. I've had a few inquiries just regarding these little feather rod holders which are made. So what we thought we'd do is actually just get one of these made on camera. I brought all the tools out just down by the side of me. I've got the leather there over in the rucksack. So what we're going to do is just cut all the leather out. I'm going to show you the wet forming. We're going to talk about the stitching and do a little bit of stitching. Then hopefully by the end of the video I'm going to get one of these made. So before we start getting into the nitty gritty of the video and running through the tools and all that kind of stuff, the first thing I thought to do is just give you a close up of the thing which we're going to make. So today's project we're going to make one of the small little rod holders, so perfect for a light my fire. We're probably just going to do a single stitch where this one's actually got a double stitch and also just on the back of here this one has got a stamp. Again that's something which you can do in the house, I just didn't want to pack the stamp up and put it in the rucksack, it is quite heavy. So by the end of the video, like I say, we're going to have something like this made. It's going to be perfect then if you want to wear it on a belt or if you want to wear it as a little necker. Or if it is, you know, once you've got, you know, the general understanding either made, there's nothing stopping you making bigger ones like this. So this one here I've made for an half inch rod. Everything's the same, just on a bigger scale. And just on the back of this one, I just made just a little bit of a patch here, stamped it, and just put that on as a little bit of decoration. So just showing you, you know, once you've actually got, uh, you know, your few little tools together, you've got your leather, you've got the understanding of making them. You know, you can pretty much make them any size and make them from any kind of ferro rod. Just before we start running through the tools, the first thing I'd like to say is if it is that you're just starting off or perhaps you're on a budget that you don't need all this stuff to be able to make one of them little ferro rod holders, the idea behind all this stuff is basically just make the job just a little bit easier and make the final results just a little bit nicer. But just as long as you've got somewhere being able to cut the leather, put holes in it and sew it up, you're pretty much good to go. So just starting off at the back here. I'm going to use some kind of glue just to uh, stick everything prior to stitching. So with that we're going to use a PVA glue. If I've got bigger projects then I'll probably use a stronger glue, something like Bostic or Evo stick. Make a good contact glue. But like I was saying for today, the PVA glue is going to be perfect. Running alongside that, we're going to sew it up with some leather working thread. This is a flat thread. We will talk more about the thread so have all these tools in greater detail just as we're running through the video. But again, you're going to need some thread. Just to keep the time down and the workload down, you could rivet it. I've just brought out this little bag of rivets here, and these are antique brass. And again, these are quite cheap to buy. I think I paid around about, I think it's around about five or six pound. And there's hundred rivets in there. Just underneath the rivets, some wet and dry paper, just so that we can sand the edges down. Just during the final stages, a little block of beeswax, just so that we can wax the threads. That's going to allow it just to slip through the holes a little bit easier, and also help seal the holes up. This tub here. This mink oil paste, this is what I use on the leather when everything's finished and awesome stuff to waterproof it and preserve your leather. Just prior to stitching, whilst the glue's drying, you're going to need a clamp of some description. And again, if it says that you're on a budget, these are absolutely brilliant for it. And I paid around about £5 for a bag of 20 from B&Q. Just be careful with these if the leather is still wet because they have got some kind of grip on the inside. And I do find that it does mark the leather a little bit. So, you know, I do make sure that that leather's dry prior to using these. Like I say, when it comes to putting holes in leather, you could just use the awl, but what we're going to use is one of these little stitching irons. It just makes the job a little bit quicker, and in my opinion, makes it a little bit neater. When we're finishing everything off, this is referred to as a burnishing stick. That just uh, finishes all the edges off just by rubbing it over the leather. Like I say, we're going to talk more about this stuff a bit later on. The needles that we're going to be using are proper saddler's needles, these are made by John James and uh, unlike things like your sail needles, you know, they have got a rounded tip on them and they're also a very strong needle. Just a cheap box cutting knife, just to cut the leather and uh, a pair of needle nose pliers, just so that we can pull the needles through if they get bound up in the leather. Just one word of note, if it is that you're going to use needle nose pliers, if you can try and find them which are quite smooth on the inside, the last thing you want are the ones with the grips on the inside because it'll start dinking and marking your needles up and then you'll have a harder job to pull them through the holes. These couple of tools here, referred to as a grooving tool and an edging tool and again this is just going to make the job just a little bit nicer. And there's the awl itself, so if it's just when I'm punching holes in it and they don't go all the way through, I can use the awl just to finish things off. A small little pair of snips just to cut the thread, and then finally just a couple of items here for measuring and also cutting on. And these cutting boards can be quite expensive, but I actually picked this up. It wasn't partners where I got it from, but it was somewhere very similar, and I actually paid around about £5 for that. But I've got one in the house which is around about four or five times the size, and I think I paid around about £30 for that. So uh, you can get them cheaper, but be aware that these cutting boards can be quite expensive. 
So the leather which we're going to be using for today's project is this veg tan leather here, and we're going to use the black. And like I mentioned, we're going to use a thick leather for the belt loop, this is three more veg tan leather, and then for the wet foam part, the part which is going to hold the ferro rod, we're going to go just a little bit thinner, and this is a two and a half mil veg tan leather. So the different leathers which we've got out in front of us, this is also referred to as a tooling leather, it means you can stamp it, you can put your stamp in it, you can wet foam it, you know, it'll do all that kind of work really easily. Going on to a real thin, softer leather, this is the kind of thing that I use for the, uh, the ferro rods when I made them little sheaths. And if it was that you wanted to wet form this, it doesn't hold very well. You know, it compress, it'd lose its shape and the likes. So again, you know, we'd use the, uh, the veg tan leather or the tooling leather there. And another piece of leather which I've got is a softer leather. Again, you know, perfect for making pouches and the likes. But if it is that I wanted to wet form it, it would probably, you know, go back flat. And if I wanted to stamp it, the stamp would probably push out. So again, you know, you do find different leathers for different kind of things. So if it is that you're going to buy a piece of leather, you know, don't just buy a piece of three mole leather, expecting it to be exactly the same kind of thing. What you're looking for, you know, is a good quality veg tan leather, you know, I think also referred to as a tooling leather. And if you get in touch with the people like I'll get this leather from, this has come from Artisan Leather down in Torquay. You know, I'm sure you can talk to them, you know, and they put you on the right track for the, you know, the kind of project which it is that you're going to be doing. So prior to cutting the leather, the first thing we've got to do is just work out which is going to be the most economical way of doing it. Obviously, you know, you don't want to waste the leather and just get one out of this amount here when you can actually get probably two, maybe three out of it. So like I say, in the three mil part, is going to be for the belt and the two and a half mil part is going to be the wet foam part which is going to retain the uh, the ferro rod so in the past i've actually made them so in this little notepad here i've got the dimensions written down already if it is that you haven't made them and you're unsure of the dimensions you know just get yourself an old cereal box and just cut the cardboard out and just make everything that way and then you can just flatten things down measure the sizes you know and, uh, cut your leather just there uh, you know after them sizes have been determined so like i say this one is going to be 170 mil by 55 mil then we can fold that in half and the little ferro rod part it's going to be 65 mil wide by 40 mil tall and that 10 mil difference when the rod's been put in and it's been shaped will actually close up and make that one around about 55 mil again which we'll talk about in a second so what we're going to do now is just measure things and just start cutting and once we've got to that process we can actually start wet forming the uh, the ferro rod part because that's got to dry and then we can actually just glue it and stitch it onto the main part then okay so we're just going to measure in the 55 mil for the width and if you wanted to if you were worried about marking you know this uh, this good side of the leather you know you could always just turn it over just so that you're actually cutting just the back side and if you do miss or you get a little bit of a scratch in it it isn't going to uh, you know really make that much difference and what i like to do is actually just keep the tip of the knife low just as we draw it down and the sharper the knife obviously the better sometimes you can cut through it just in one cut Oh, like it's done here it's just taken a couple of cuts there and the beauty about this leather is the fact that when you do cut it it doesn't it leave a nice clean edge and that will polish up really nice you know when it comes to that time point so that's see uh, the belt loop part sorted and then we're just going to cut out just a little ferro rod part and exactly the same kind of thing we're just going to measure it and then we're just going to cut it down just using exactly the same kind of uh, process just keeping that blade down low so we're going to go for 65 mil just like so and then
what I've just done there is build a little bit of water just so that we can dampen this leather down just so we can start the wet forming you don't want the water too hot you know if I'm in the house I just run the hot water tap you know and that uh, is sufficient just whilst we let this cool down just a little bit we're just going to use the edging tool just on the smaller part which we're going to wet form and what we're going to do with that is just run it down the edges and that's going to make a nice little angled bevel there so when it comes that we burnish it that edge there is nicely rounded off so with that we're just going to use the little edging tool itself and you can get these in various sizes i think this is the smaller size here i think they go one two and three something like that but i definitely know this is the smaller size it's basically just a case of just getting your leather and just putting it on the edge there i'm just going to run it down and that's just going to remove just a small portion of leather just like so so just turning it around doing the other side So as you can see, and I can get the camera just to pick that up there, I do apologise for the shadows and the lights, it's obviously just this time of year, but you can actually just see the colour difference there in the leather, where we've just actually chamfered that edge off, just by using that little tool. Now the next stage from that, we're just going to wet form it, I'm just going to pop it in the, uh, in the water, we're just going to soften it down just a little bit, it doesn't need a great deal of softening down, it is quite a soft leather as it is, then we're just going to use the ferro rod, and that's going to be the mould, just to mould the shape. And all we're going to do, just dip it in, it doesn't take a great deal of time, just getting it wet enough and just warm enough that it's going to soften up and then when it dries it's going to retain the shape and then again you know what like this kind of leather does when it does go hard you know it basically just feels like a piece of wood again and as you can see now that leather there is very pliable so it's just a case again the ferro rod like i say and this is going to be the mold which we're going to use and then just centralizing it up with the ferro rod the best we can it's just a case of basically just pushing it down just being careful at this point because anything that uh, will dig in like your fingernails and that kind of things you know will mark the leather and uh, you know once it's in it doesn't really come out so just taking the time here just making sure that everything's centralized and the idea behind this part now is just making sure that you get it how it is that you want it so with these edges here nice and flat so that when they uh, get fastened to the other part of the leather that they're sitting nice and flush against it so this we're just going to hold for a few minutes just till it starts to dry and then uh, it will retain its shape and it will hold it seen over here pretty much definitely and then once you're happy with the shape of that we're just going to pop it over to one side just to let it dry and then we're just going to concentrate on the main part like i say in the belt loop here so again we're going to do exactly the same kind of thing we're going to take the edges off just so when they're burnished everything's nice and rounded off and the procedure is exactly the same just taking your time with this part like so and then we're just going to leave the bottom part there because we're going to run a groove in there for the stitch and what I want to do is make sure that that edge is as level as possible just so I can make sure that that line is going to be as straight as possible so the tool which we're going to use just to put the groove in is this little grooving tool here and like I mentioned at the beginning you know if you want to keep the cost down you don't need these kind of things you don't need the edging tool and the likes you know this is just going to finish things off and make things nicer but if it is you just want a functional piece of uh, you know leather work if you wanted to you could just draw a line using a rule you can measure the stitch spacing you can just either drill through it or just use an awl you know and punch through that way but just using that, these kind of things you know just makes the job just a little bit more neater so what we're going to do is just measure the distance what we need and this actually just slides just across like so and with this one here we're probably just going to have it around about five mil from the edge so just measuring it up to the leather like so and then just digging in and just kind of canting it over to the side a little bit what it'll do there it'll remove just that little strip of leather creating a nice little groove just inside the leather here so the idea behind this is so when the stitching's in there it's nice and flush so with the ferro rod being pushed in i want to keep this uh, this thread underneath the leather here so that the edge of the ferro rod actually rides over the top and misses the thread itself so i'm going to go probably three times along just to make that groove just a little bit deeper and as you can see there there's a little groove just in the leather and that's the one which we're going to stitch across and once this is dry we're going to do the same just up the edges of here just so that the stitching can hide underneath the leather and also just mark where the stitching is going to be in the first place
And then once you're happy with the edges, we're just going to put just a little bead of glue just down the leather. And you don't need a great deal of this. What tends to happen is once you put a, a little bit of pressure onto it, it ends up just squeezing out anyway. But just make sure it's covered, just like so. And I'm just going to position it just where we want it. Just making sure that one edge butts up flush. And then we're just going to apply just a little bit of pressure and just allow that side to set. And then once one side's dry, I'd just like to put the rod in just to make sure that everything's centralised. And you know there you've got enough rod sticking out the bottom just so that you can lash just a little bit of a bungee round. But with this side here, I'm going to use the clamps purely for the fact that we've just got to compress it and push it up just a little bit. So I just need something just to help grip it. You know, just don't rip that leather there to the glue just whilst it's setting. So with this one, I'm just going to turn it upside down. I'm just going to put just a little bit of glue just on my finger. That's the beauty about this PVA glue. You know, it just uh, rolls off really easily. And I'm just going to put it just on the inside here. Again, just... Uh, wiping away any excess and again the beauty of it is we're going to sand these edges down at the end so if you do get little bits of glue on it you know it's, uh, it's no real big deal just making sure we've got enough just hold everything in position just like so and then we're just going to use uh, these little clamps here just to hold it going to leave that to set for probably around about half an hour if you were in the house you know it probably only take around about 10 or 15 minutes you know but just giving it enough time that when we start punching the holes in that the leather isn't going to move you know so just being on the safe side really just perhaps give it half an hour just to set so once you're happy that everything's dry i've left this around about 40 45 minutes so hopefully that's now bonded to the other piece of leather we're going to start knocking the holes in for the stitching now, like I said in the beginning, there's various ways which you can do it. If you want to keep the cost down, you can just use an awl and just actually just stab it all the way through the leather. But what we're going to do for this one, we're going to use these little stitch irons. You can get these in different sizes. And they vary from £5 each, and I've actually seen them up to around about £60 each. So again, you know, you can pay you know as much or as little as you want to, really. And these are a 2 mil stitch iron. So it's going to leave me with a two mil gap in between each thread and i suppose the bigger the item you know you don't want to you know loads of stitching on it you probably go with the four mil one you know and that kind of thing but this one here has actually got six prongs on it this other one here has got two i've got them in the house with four and three that kind of thing so we're going to use the longer one when it comes to putting you know the runner stitches across if it is that you wanted to go around the corner that kind of thing you could just use the one with the two little prongs we have actually got one in the house with a single prong on it now the all itself this isn't a round all so if i actually stuck down a piece of paper you'd see it's more of a diamond shape like the little stitch uh, so the little stitch irons are and it's going to replicate the same kind of thing it just makes the gap just a little bit bigger so that when you're putting the thread back through or if you're doing what you refer to as a saddle stitch you know the all's big enough that you can get both needles through when you're doing the stitching so what I'm going to do with this and just lay it just on another scrap piece of leather like so just so that it doesn't go straight through my board and then the idea behind it is just to keep these as straight as possible make sure that they're upright make sure that they're not canted over you know that way then you're going to make sure that the all goes straight through the piece of leather so once you're happy where they are the hammer here was just a little cheap hammer, you know, I picked up for around about £4, so if you've got an old, you know, an old hammer in the shed, that kind of thing, it's going to work perfectly as well. Then I'm just going to start tapping through. And what that would have done there has gone straight through and come out the back side of the leather, which is going to make the stitching a lot easier than try and force the needle through the leather itself. And I'm just going to repeat that. And the idea behind this, if you want to keep them nice and straight, is actually marry up some of the spikes on these with the holes that you've originally put in. So we're just going to go back and actually just put these prongs into them three holes there. And I'm just going to knock it through and just finish off just this run of holes here. So 
So once you're happy with the holes, they've been punched all the way through. It's then just a case of deciding what kind of thread it is that you want to use. So for this project, we're going to use a tangerine coloured thread. It does contrast nice with the black. But the thread itself is a flat thread. You can buy flat or you can buy, uh, buy round. You can buy naturals and you can also buy synthetic. This one is a synthetic thread. I'm not sure what it's made out of, but uh, you know, with it being synthetic, it means once it comes to tie the knot, you can actually just touch it with a lighter and that will help seal the knot up. Now the diameter of this is uh, 0.8 millimeters. You can buy, I think it's 0.6, you can buy one millimeter. Again, you know, the, the size of the work really is gonna dictate the thickness of the thread. You know, if that thread was too thick, it'd probably just cover everything up, you know, and look a mess. Now the needles which we're gonna be using, you know, which was a surprise to myself, these are a saddler's needle, and they're pretty much blunt, you know, you'd expect them to be quite sharp. But these needles themselves, you can pick up for around about three or four pounds, and you get around about 25 needles in a packet, you know, and each needle does quite, uh, last for quite a long time. So when it comes to uh, measuring how much thread it is that you're gonna need, I like to use five times the amount, because what we're gonna do with this is a running stitch. So we're gonna stitch it both front and back, there's going to be one continual run of stitching, there's going to be no gaps in between. Very similar to the saddle stitch. But the saddle stitch, you'd use two needles, you know, and you probably need something like a stitch pony just to hold that piece of work up for you. But because I'm doing this basically, you know, just on my lap, I'm going to opt for this kind of stitching because it means I can hold the work at the same time, you know, as running the stitching through. One tip I will give you when it comes to threading the needle is just cut the thread off at a 45 degree angle. It just means you're going to get it just through the uh, through the eye uh, of the needle just a little bit easier. And once you've actually got it through, what you want to do then is just get the needle itself. And then we're just going to pierce it through the centre of the thread. Just like so. And then we're going to pull it back down. And that then should lock in position and stop it from coming apart and slipping out of the eye when it says that you're stitching. So when it comes to the stitching, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start on the back side and I'm going to start up the top. I'm going to run the stitching down and then back up. So I'd like it to finish up the top here with the knot just on the inside. So just taking the time with the stitching, and this is what uh, you know takes the majority of the time, and I suppose why and stitched uh, you know products are so expensive. What we're doing there, just leaving enough just at the back here so we can finish off and actually just tie a knot. And with this thread being flat, I want to just try and make sure that uh, you know it lies nice and flat, just in the groove here. If it twists like that, it's just a case of just untwisting it, you know, don't be in a rush and just pulling it and just twisting all this thread. So just taking the time here and just pulling that nice and tight. Then we're just going to work, you know, back to front, back to front, back to front, all the way down and then back up. So as you can see there, it just started to twist. I'm just going to untwist it, hold it with my finger and then just pull it through. And then again, just front to back, just working away all the way down to the bottom. Now when we've reached the bottom like so, it's just a case of just turning the piece of work over and then we're going to run all the way back up in between them stitches there. And that's the beauty about using that, uh, that diamond shape awl and also these little prick irons, it just makes them holes just a little bit bigger just so that you can get the thread through quite easily. Just making sure again, you know, that that, that thread here is running nice and flat. just as you're coming out there making sure that we don't pierce any of the other threads and then once you get into this you know you can pick your speed up a little bit you know when I first started making these it'd probably take me around about three hours you know now I could probably just get one done you know in just over an hour and a half something like that and then once you've come back out to the top what I'm going to do is just double this top stitch up here just to make it just a little bit more secure and then that also just put this thread just on the back side with the piece of work. Again, just making sure that uh, it's nice and flat. Just stopping that little bit of a twist there. And then I'm just gonna pull it nice and tight. And like I say now, that's doubled that stitch up up the top here. So when it is that you put anything inside it, you know, it's not gonna split apart. And that thread, you know, is gonna be a lot more secure. So the knot itself, just on the inside, I'm just gonna do an overhand knot. 
like I say, we can then snip this off, just touch it with a cigarette lighter, and that then will seal the knot and stop it from coming undone. And as you can see there, that knot's now secure and that thread is running up the entire length of the piece. So I'm just going to repeat the process just on the other side and then I'll just show you once I've done that how we actually fasten the bottom and stitch the bottom up. And as you can see now that thread there is quite tidy and knots are nice and secure at the back so I'm just going to test it just with the ferro rod just make sure that everything still fits well and then what we're going to do now just like we did when we attached the uh, little wet form piece we're just going to fold it over we're just going to glue along the bottom we're just going to clamp it until it dries and then we're just going to knock the holes through and then stitch it in exactly the same kind of manner As you can see now that was glued, clamped and I've just punched the old suit ready for stitching. If it was when I punched the old suit that they didn't go all the way through then that's where that all would come in just to make sure you know I could finish them holes off and drive them all the way through. So again we're just going to start from the back side because I want to finish up on the back side just to tie the knot and we're going to do exactly the same kind of procedure as before. Just making sure that that thread is nice and flat. Making sure that there's no twists in it. So we're just going to go on down to the bottom and then back up to the top. This side we're just going to be just a little bit more critical with the stitching because obviously you'll be able to see it on this back side so we're just going to try and make it as tidy as we can. And then just on the back side there's a couple of things which we could do, we could have either brought the thread back out of here and tied the knot so that we could actually slide it just on the inside. But what I like to do, just nice and quick, just snip it off, we're going to tie just an overhand knot which is going to be a similar kind of thickness as the thread and then once we bobbed it down just by using the cigarette lighter that then will hold it secure.
So as you can see now, everything's stitched up, that's all nice and secure, and realistically if you wanted to, you could call that done. But just to finish things off, we're just going to sand the edges down, and then we're just going to burnish them. That then will seal all this end off here, and just make everything look a lot neater. So a few different, different options, emery boards are always a, a good option, and also wet and dry paper of different grits. So just starting off with the coarser side, what I like to do with this is just take it in one direction, I'm just going to rub it. Basically just remove all that old glue and also if the leather itself you know hasn't butted up evenly we could just then just sand it down and just make everything neat. And then once you finish with the emery boards you can then just go down into grit sizes just by using the wet and dry and that then will smooth all this off and we can start polishing it up just a little bit for you So after around about 20 minutes worth of sanding, that edge now is nice and flush, it's all nice and smooth. You know, it's not too bad considering you know, I've made that outside. What we're going to do now is just finish off and just seal the edges. There's various different things which we can use. There's various different dies and all that kind of stuff. One of the dies which I do like is this edge die finisher. I've only actually got this in brown. And it's the kind of things which we use on the brown leather, obviously. What that's going to do is just dye that edge for us. It helps to seal everything and just uh, blends all that in with the colour of the leather. I have actually got a black at home, but what I'm going to do is actually use this other product here. You can use water if you want. I can't pronounce it, it's gum, and it's named after a plant, Tragosanth Edge Polish, and this comes from, I think, so I to believe, Afghanistan. It's a plant over there which they use, and it smells a bit like pine, and when you open the tub up, it's got a jelly-like consistency. You could use water if you wanted to, but all we do with this actually just put it just on the edge of the leather like so and if you wanted to dye this edge black I've seen people use you know marker pens just to colour it in but you know if you're just gonna have it as a functional piece of leather work you know there's not a great deal of a problem just keeping it natural like this and basically this next stage you can spend five minutes or you can spend five hours on it it all depends on how much time and effort that you want to put into it and you want this edge to be finished. And once it's been covered like so, we then just use this little burnishing stick here just to uh, polish everything off and just like I say, flatten all this grain down and just seal it all in. So with the burnishing stick, there's various different ways of using it. You've got all these little cutouts here for different thicknesses of leather. You could just use the flat section if you wanted to just rub it on the flat or if you wanted just to go over just a joint piece of leather like that there, you could just use that bottom end and with that shape it would just out round just eat the edge off and basically just make that look like one single piece of leather so we're just going to, like I say, give that, let that dry just for around about five minutes and then we'll just start burnishing this up and just getting these edges looking really nice And there we have it, a little feather rod holder made, that's not turned out too bad. The stitching's nice and even, the edges are nice and flush. Just test it with a ferro rod, just to check that it fits okay. And that's nice and central, nice and secure. That would fit on a belt, or if you wanted to, you could put a bit of cord through that, you know, a little bit of paracord, something like that, to make a lanyard. You could wear that as a little necker. So, not too bad really, Consider I've made that in the woods. And I'll tell you what I will do. The first person who sends a comment saying send me the rod holder, I'll get that in the post, I'll get it sent over to you. I've made loads of these, I've got them coming out in years. Obviously I've only got the one, and you're not getting the ferro rod, you'll just be getting the older. But like I say, just leave a comment, I'll get it in the post, I'll get it sent over to you early next week. 
So there we have you guys, I hope that's been a bit of a few people who asked about it. Just showing you there the tools, the different types of leather, that kind of thing. And if it is that you're interested in making one of the rod holders, like I've seen, just a little bit of leather, just a bit of time, a little bit of patience, and you've got one made. So like always, you just leave me say thanks a lot for you stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time, you take care, and I'll see you again.